In this video, we'll be looking at protection in Australia. Uh, this focus is on Australia's trade policy. If we look at where we are in terms of the syllabus, we're in this first dot point for free trade and protection, and the focus here is on Australia's policies regarding free trade and protection. What does this dot point even mean? What it's asking us is what are Australia's policies regarding free trade and protection? Now the hint is that Australia is very supportive of free trade and reducing protection. Right, before we start a couple of key terms, I'm gonna breeze through these, but you can always pause it uh, and get more information. First thing is free trade. We just talk about no artificial barriers to trade no efforts to shield domestic producers from foreign competition. The flip side is protection, which are government policies that give domestic producers an artificial, sorry, an artificial advantage over foreign producers, the makers of imports. Another thing we, we just quickly revise here are the forms of protection. We don't need to go into detail now, we will later. Just recall that tariffs are a tax on imports. Subsidies are payments to domestic producers to help them against foreign producers. And that quotas are restrictions on the amount of imports that are let in to a particular economy. All right, let's do a small bit of a history lesson. If we think about Australia's policies regarding free trade and protection, if we cast our minds back previously that Australia used to be highly protected. There were large barriers to free trade. There was a desire to protect Australian manufacturers who found it difficult to compete on world markets. And that we used to have quite a thriving manufacturing sector in terms of passenger motor vehicles, PMV, and also textile clothing and footwear, TCF, so that these industries were protected to give them support uh, against foreign competition. So we say now, so sort of 80s onwards, there's been a large shift to a more open economy. Australia as a prominent advocate, an enthusiastic supporter for trade liberalization or free trade. During the 1980s, the Australian government began to phase out almost all of the tariffs. So almost all of those taxes on imports and reduce subsidies to domestic producers. Now around half of imports are tariff free and the remainder are subject to tariffs of 5% or less. So relatively small. In addition, Australia has signed many bilateral free trade agreements, FTAs, and is part of many multilateral trade agreements. And we're gonna look at these in more detail in future videos, but see the shift. Uh, from highly protected now to an open economy. If you want a bit of evidence, you can look at Australia's average level of tariffs, that it's gone from 36% to just 1.3%. The other thing you can look at is that the subsidies paid to farmers in Australia are just 1% of farm income. But in the US, subsidies are larger, so it's 9%. EU, even more protected, 19%. And in Japan, 43% of farmers' incomes comes from subsidies. So we then think about, well, why? Why would the Australian government reduce protection levels? What's the benefit? There are four things that you should focus on and be able to discuss. So next to each of these in your notes, you should be able to explain how a reduction in protection leads to this and the benefits. So the first point is that by reducing protection, the Australian government is forcing domestic industries to become more internationally competitive. By letting in imports, domestic producers now need to compete with imports, get more efficient, become better producers. The second point here is that by reducing protection, the government wants to encourage resources away from inefficient industries that need protection and then encourage resources land, labour, capital, enterprise, to go to industries that can compete without protection, have got good products and good technology and can do that. The th third point is that the Australian government wants to reduce protection to give consumers access to more benefits from the global economy, so more goods and services at lower prices. 
The fourth thing is that by reducing protection, the Australian government would like to promote structural change in the economy. So structural change being a change in the economy's mix of industries. So the government would like to see efficient producers that don't need extra support and would like to see uh, less resources going towards industries that require lots of protection and large amounts of support and are inefficient. So these are the four broad reasons why the Australian government has reduced protection levels. So in summary, Australia used to be a heavily protected economy. Australia is now an enthusiastic advocate of free trade and has been for some time. And that free trade has delivered substantial benefits to the Australian economy. And this is something we'll see in future videos.